question is, how can we protect our nieces and nephews uh, in the family from Islam when now Islam is, is empowered in Canada? They are only four and seven. Um, okay, I think I'm going to sound like a, um, I'm going to keep repeating myself here. Uh, but I think it goes back again to teaching them critical thinking skill. Yeah. I, I don't know if Islam is being empowered in Canada. I think there's just yeah. like there's more immigration in Canada and like Canada mm -hmm. is like. Mm, I'd, I'd love to know what they mean by that. Islam is right. empowered in Canada. Yeah. I mean, there are certain narratives that the government has that sometimes are like, yeah. Like, no, like, that's not yeah, the right yeah. way to protect minorities, but okay, whatever. Uh, thought, but, yeah. I thought there was a larger movement of, like, Sikhs in Canada than there was, like, Muslims, but maybe I just... No, but the Sikhs, the Sikhs are not, like, promoting Sikhism, right? Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. so the Sikhs fair. are like, hey, we're just here, we're part of everything, and we're like, cool, that's, that's fine. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. But, like, so I think what they're worried about, I think, okay, here's the thing. Generally, in North America, I think um, what what worries me about what young, especially men, could be get attracted to Islam is from right leaning people right now, mm -hmm. right? Like it's more like Andrew Tate kind of people who might be mm -hmm. promoting Islam than than Muslims themselves, right? Okay? That alpha um, male bro culture. Like, yeah dude, like come on bro you gotta be like you gotta be tough man otherwise the chicks aren't gonna like dig you man like, shut up. <laughs> all right well i mean i mean it's, there's some truth to that confidence you just though, said. but it's yeah, confidence, confidence. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. but that goes across the board for anybody that doesn't freaking yeah. matter it's just okay. but not like being a jerk to people actively like that's not gonna win you over fans, yes but. yes yes but in general if you want to protect um you know a four-year-old and a seven-year-old from yeah. islam and all other religion and all other dogma and all other superstition okay i think there's a lot of resources for making learning critical thinking skills fun, right? Yeah. There's a lot of cool, colorful books. I don't think you need to necessarily tell them about religion and that, like, mm -hmm. I think that might even um, backfire on you. Like if you tell your kids like, oh, Islam bad, Islam is not bad. They might like, as they grow, they might, they're gonna go through a rebellious phase. And then we're like, let me check out this thing that they told me not to uh, check out because that sounds pretty badass. And I have to like, you know, so, don't, maybe maybe that's not going to be a good idea, right? So instead, just focusing on, you know, teaching them the basic understanding of what's a good argument. What's a, like four or seven might be too young for that. I don't know what age. Um, what age do you think is a good age to start teaching kids? I know it should be in elementary school. So I think but... I think at the age of I think at the age of four, children are capable of understanding the very broad strokes of it. Um, so I remember one of my high school teachers uh, when I was uh, um, a senior at, at my high school. Um, he was writing a children's book that was focused on this, and one of the things that this book focused on was um, it said things like um, like it showed a picture of a puppy, right? And it says, this is like, this is our puppy spot, you know, um, you know, what does, what does spot's fur feel like? And then you would flip the page and there would be a little spot that's like fur and then you would touch it. Right. And then it would ask you questions about like things you learned after touching the fur. And so basically the whole point of this book was to try to get children at a very young age to start to understand like, what is the process of testing things? Right. Like there was a point where it said like, Here's a picture of a slug. slug. Slugs feel scaly and rough, right? And then you flip the page and then you touch this thing and it's like kind of this like weird, you know, like putty or whatever. And it feels kind of slimy. And it's like, oh no, we were wrong. Like now we have to change our hypothesis. So like, I think you can do those, those broad things like that at, at that age of four. And I, I agree. I don't, I don't think what you do is you don't, you don't go in and you say, hey, let me... <clears throat> Let me tell you how ridiculous it is that the story of Muhammad splitting the moon. Like, you don't do that. What you do is you go in and you say like, hey, what do we think about something? How do we know that? How could we figure that out? And you you go that, you know, broad aspect of it because yes. it's those basic skills that are going to be the building blocks that allow you to get to the point of, well, the refutation of premise two in your argument, you know, that's what's going to get you to that point, right? 
Right. And for a, that's that's for like a much younger age, but like some an example for something for a, a you know, yeah, um, somebody somebody a little bit older. I think this. I don't know what age this is good for. Okay, but it says like, look at this is an illustrated book of bad arguments, right? Mm -hmm. By Ali, by Ali Al Musawi. Okay. Those characters and it's pretty on the good. front look adorable. Like I'd read that book. So yeah, like it has it goes through oh different arguments and like oh my god, you know, you have examples of bad arguments and what fallacy that is, right? So it's a pretty adorable, cute That's book. That's so cool. And I think there's a lot of resources like this for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was um oh, I'm gonna forget her name. And this is this sucks because she's she was really cool. And a couple of years ago, there was this. She she was like thirteen, I think. Um, and her parents are atheists, and she was raised secular, non-religious. And she ended up writing like a children's book about how all children are stardust, you know. And it was talking about like the creation of the universe and all the like science that we know about the Big Bang and like all this stuff. And it was really really cool. And um, like Seth Andrews ended up doing an interview with with her and um i mean obviously her her parent was there her father was there so because she was you know 14 but um mm. yeah there there are stuff there is definitely stuff out there like that um it's harder to find for sure but that that would be my suggestion too. go find stuff like that and have it be more in a generalized sense rather than specifically combating islam so mm. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.